Hey everyone, welcome to 4-H Virtual Office Hours. Today we are talking about how May is Mental Health Awareness Month and what that can mean for you and your club. So as I said, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And one of the reasons that we wanted to talk about this topic is because there is currently a mental health crisis in nationwide and some of that is due to the COVID-19 pandemic and also the rise in stress with exposure to media and such. And this not only affects 4-H because of the fact that there is teen and youth mental health, but also because adult volunteers. So we wanted to share some resources with you all. So Iowa State University Extension and Outreach Focus is a couple different ways we have because of COVID-19 we have a COVID recovery Iowa which is an initiative to help the um, state of Iowa transition back into our our new normal for what life will be post-COVID and one of the initiatives is talking about the mental health crisis and that is one of Polk County's focus areas. And so with that, we also have education that spans demographics. For example, we have um, Mindful Teen, which is a program targeted towards teenagers, but we also have a um, training targeted for the mental health of farmers. And then we also have programs and workshops. So between 4-H and human sciences, we have quite a few programs that target families and youth. One is called Question, Persuade, Refer, which is a specific to suicide um, prevention training. It helps you understand um, how to identify potential suicidal youth and um, are also adults with suicidal ideation. And then it gives you some tools to help persuade them to not commit suicide and then refer to appropriate organizations. We have a program called Strengthening Families 10 to 14, which is targeted towards families with youth that are 10 to 14 years old. And the reason that we wanted to highlight this with um, the idea of mental health is because we talk about peer pressure and how to talk to your parents about that and how parents can have healthy conversations with their teens about mental health and um, how to seek help if they need some. And then we also offer youth as well as adult mental health first aid, which is similar to Question Persuade Refer, but it is lengthier and much more in depth and it doesn't just focus on suicidal ideation, but um, some other mental health issues such as anxiety, depression, um, self-harm, things as such, and helps you get ideas on how to have conversations around that. And 4-H is offering Mindful Teen, which is a series of, or a seven-week series for teens that introduces them to the idea of mindfulness and how mindfulness can help with their mental health. Then we also have a new program, which will hopefully be beginning to be offered in the fall called Family Mindfulness. And it's a similar idea as Mindful Teen, but it brings in the whole family. And so the whole family gets to um, enjoy the program together and talk about how they can incorporate mindfulness into their home. And for those that aren't aware, here is the defini definition of mindfulness. A mental state achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment, while calmly acknowledging and accepting one's feelings, thoughts, and boldly, bodily sensations used as a therapeutic technique. So we wanted to talk about how you can incorporate mindfulness into your 4-H meetings and why that would be a good thing. So as the definition states, it's focusing your energy and awareness on the present moment, which we really don't often do. We we focus on our phones, we focus on the distractions around us, technology, TV, other people, and we don't often just sit and focus on what we're currently doing. And we do find that that is really important and helps to achieve a uh, healthier 
mental health. So some ideas that you, we have for you is to include brain breaks throughout your meeting. Sometimes for each meetings can get long and maybe be a little bit dull. So some ideas we have is exercise dice. You can get these on Amazon, but also if you've ever seen the, um, how you can make dice out of paper, that simple format, you can use that and write your own exercise on. And so you typically use two dice. One of them has numbers. Sometimes it's seconds, sometimes it's just 10. And then another dice has exercise ideas, for example, jumping jacks or crunches, wall sit. So you roll both of the dice at the same time and there is your brain break. You do whatever it says. You could do yoga. We do have 4-H, the 4-H pledge yoga, which would be a really easy way to incorporate because most club meetings start with the 4-H pledge or end. And then you could also do um, adult coloring pages or just coloring pages in general as a little break to help refocus the energy. And then mindful activities that you could do are a body scan. And if you just search into YouTube, it can do a video led body scan. Sometimes it's um, a unique experience to lead it yourself. But the goal there is to really focus your energy beginning from your feet all the way up to your head on your, your bodily senses and how you're feeling each of those and calming them and relaxing them. And the next activity is mindfulness jars, where you have, you could either reuse a jar, use a mason jar. We have found little plastic um, bottles on Amazon. You do want to have a lid. And you fill it about three quarters of the way, or I'm sorry, one half of the way full with, one quarter to one half of the way full with clear glue. And then the rest of the way full, maybe about that much space on whatever bottle you're using at the top and then you put glitter inside or you can put the glitter in before you put the water in so it's glue then glitter then water and then oops you put the lid on sometimes you can glue the lid on but sometimes depending on what kind of glue you lid it can use it can leave space and then the water gets everywhere it's kind of a mess but seal it very tightly shake it up and then because it's the glue in the water it takes longer for the glitter to get to the bottom. And so during that mindful moment, you can either be mindful as you watch the glitter fall, or you can use it as more of a timer to just take a little break. You could go for a mindful walk, which really just means focusing your awareness and attention on the crunching of your feet on the leaves or the grass or the sound of the leaves blowing in the wind, etc. Just being really intentional in that moment on the walk. And there are mindful eating exercises. This, if again, if you use YouTube, you can do mindful eating um, video, which will lead you through the activity of how to mindfully take a bite. The uh, food that we use when we do this activity is a raisin. Not everybody's a fan of raisins, I'm personally not. But um, it's a really good activity and gets you focused on being mindful. So these are some ideas that we have to offer you. And then I just wanna mention that you can too. We can all be mindful. We can all focus on our mental health. We have quite a few um, upcoming opportunities. As I mentioned, the Mindful Teen Facilitator, or I'm sorry, the Mindful Teen Program, you can become trained to be a facilitator for the community or for your club. And if you're interested in that, there is the link. There are upcoming question, persuade, refer. The really great thing about that program is that it's typically held over the lunch hour. So if you can just hop on, it's not necessarily interactive. You can just get on and get that information. Mental health first aid. This also has links to teen mental health first aid or youth mental health first aid. Um, that is a day long professional development day. So if you have some flexibility in your work day, I would highly recommend that. It was a very good training. And then if you are a youth, a way that you can get involved with mental health and how that is interacting with our 4-H program is by becoming a 4-H teen influencer. And there are different categories that you can pick as far as what um, demographic of youth you want to champion. 
but mental health is a focus on there. And so you can use your voice for the better of 4-H and how we can be better focusing on youth mental health. Is there any questions? There's nobody on right now, so I'm guessing not. But if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out to myself or Megan or Marcy. My email is mgaskin at iastate.edu. So you always have my contact information. And if you don't know it, it's on our website and in the Clover Power. We hope you will join us in the future um, 4-H virtual office hours in May. Next month, we will be talking about 4-H summer opportunities. Thank you all.